Luke chapter number 4, the gospel of Luke chapter number 4. We're just going to read several verses here and get right into the message. Luke chapter 4, the Bible says in verse 31, And came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed and spake amongst themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about. Let's pray. Father, we're thankful, Lord. Uh, that you never require anything of us that is beyond our ability or anything of us that, Lord, would not bring honor and glory unto thee. Now, Lord, our hearts are rejoicing in hearing of the good jail services last night and this morning. For those folks that have been born again, thank you for that. And thank you for those that have been saved that got some help. Now, Lord, we bless you and praise you for it. God, we are thankful on this cold day we can come into the house of God uh, and our hearts be warmed by your presence, uh, by the singing of the old songs of Zion, uh, by uh, uh, hearing the word of God read and fellowshipping with the saints of God. Uh, we are a blessed people this morning. God, we thank you for your choice blessings. Uh, thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. Uh, Lord, it's only by your grace that we're not out living under a bridge on this cold morning. Uh, or God, that we're not uh, uh, facing very dreadful disease. Uh, or God, that we're not uh, 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 in this place not knowing where our next meal would come from. God, we just bless you for uh, all your blessings. And thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. Uh, now, Father, we pray that, Lord, you'd put a hedge about us now. We plead the blood of the Lord Jesus over this place. Uh, I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel to deliver the message you burden my heart with. Uh, God, I pray your people would be blessed and helped, uh, encouraged and edified. Uh, God, I pray if there's somebody here this morning that's struggling, God, uh, they get a word from heaven that would encourage them and help them. Uh, God, I pray for somebody here this morning that's low, uh, that, Lord, your great mighty arms would reach way down and lift them up. Uh, God, I pray for somebody here unsaved, uh, that, God, you'd speak to their hearts. Uh, show them how much you love them. Uh, I draw them to yourself and save them. Uh, and God, I pray that, Lord, uh, uh, you'd rend the heavens and take up your boat in a mighty way. Uh, God, send revival these days. Uh, melt our hearts of stone. Uh, God, break our modes of complacency. Uh, God, help us to desire you above all other things. Uh, and God, help us to see you high and lifted up. Uh, Father, I pray for those that are sick. I pray for Brother Aaron's father's having surgery. You'd be with him. Uh, God, I pray for Brother Jerry Allen's father. Uh, you'd touch him. Uh, Lord, I pray for Miss Dawn that's sick. You'd help her. Uh, God, I pray for Miss Loretta and our elderly. You'd be with them and be with Miss Loretta's prayer request. Uh, God, I pray for uh, uh, Megan and Ryan uh, 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 and their family, their children. They'd get back in church. And I pray for their upcoming surgery. Uh, God, I pray, Lord, for those, uh, uh, Lord, that are sick and afflicted or providentially hindered couldn't be here. Uh, I pray for them, Lord, you'd touch them and help them. Uh, God, I pray for those that could be here. Uh, God, you'd burden their heart for the things of God. Uh, now, Father, help us this morning. Uh, 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 touch every heart. Uh, God, get glory to your glorious name. Uh, and God, just show yourself for how great you are. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. In this uh, uh, portion of Scripture, we see just one of the many times uh, that Jesus 
uh, uh, will exercise a demon out of somebody. Uh, uh, we see that it wasn't a special service had to be done. Uh, all it took was Jesus speaking the word. Uh, and can I say, uh, hallelujah, his word uh, still does marvelous things. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, uh, these people were literally vexed uh, with demons. Uh, can I say that is nothing strange to our day? Uh, there are people who are physically vi vexed uh, uh, with satanic powers. Uh, but can I say there are also other kind of demons that haunt people. Uh, uh, there are demons of the past. Uh, there are demons of regret. Uh, there are demons of addiction. Uh, 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 it may be drugs. Uh, uh, it may be demons of addiction to pornography. Uh, it may be demons of addiction to computers uh, uh, and Facebook. Uh, it may be demons of se low self-esteem. Uh, uh, there are a lot of things that are haunting people uh, and oppressing people. Uh, but I've got good news. Uh, Jesus is still on the throne. Uh, he's still able to deliver. Uh, hey, there's nothing too hard for Jesus. Uh, he loves you. He's concerned about you uh, and can break the bondage of any demon you face this morning. Uh, I want you to notice a few things about the text. Uh, I want you to notice, first of all, the astonishment. Look at verse 32 again. And they were astonished at his doctrine. And can I say there's a lot of people that believe a lot of things. And there are a lot of people who are very sincere in what they believe. Uh, there are people who are willing to die for what they believe. Unfortunately, a lot of people believe things that are false doctrine. When you get them in the Bible and show them what God says, it will still astonish people. A lot of people say, I didn't know that was in the Bible. A lot of people say, that's where that came from. Uh, uh, you see, people view the Bible as just being a rule book. Uh, and it's got a lot of rules and regulations that you got to follow. And if you don't follow them, uh, uh, God's going to smite you with a big ball bat uh, over the head. But that's not the Bible. You know the greatest love letter ever written is the Bible. Uh, uh, when uh, uh, you realize that you were dead in sin and of no use to God, uh, uh, but God, in his, even though he's holy, and majestic uh, and reverent uh, he looked down in pity and love uh, and he loved you even so, uh, though you didn't deserve his love uh, and he cared for you uh, and he gave his life for you uh, and he's willing to redeem you uh, it ought to astonish you to think the great God and glory that uh, 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 made everything that was made uh, uh, the one the Bible says parted the Red Sea uh, uh, the one that closed the mouths of the lions in Daniel's lion's den uh, uh, the one that took a rock and slew uh, a Goliath from David sling uh, uh, the one that let the three Hebrews go to the furnace but they didn't burn up uh, come out without the smell of smoke uh, that great God uh, who flung the stars out on nothing uh, who tells the sun when to shine uh, hey he knows the intents of your heart uh, number the hairs on your head uh, and he loves you today uh, that uh, astonishes me I've been saved 43 years and I hadn't got over the fact God loves me and he loves you. Uh, when you study the doctrine of the Word of God, it'll astonish you to think that God cares that much. Uh, can I say, not only do we notice the astonishment, notice the authority. Look in verse 32. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. Just something about the authority of God and his word. And can I say, when his man stands up under his unction and preaches the word of God with power, there's some authority behind it. Can I say, I don't apologize for the word of God. I'm not sheepish when it comes to the word of God. Uh, there are bumper stickers that said, God said it, I believe it, and it's so. I got news for you. Whether you believe it or not, God said it, that settles it. And I won't back up on it. Because God said it. The Bible says when heaven and earth are passed away, you can still stand on the promises of the Word of God. Uh, can I say it's authority, His authority? Notice the adversity, though. Look at verse 33. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Uh, now notice Jesus is in the synagogue, and there's a man there full of the devil. Can I say, don't, don't ever get of the mindset that everybody that comes to the house of God is right with God. 
And don't be afraid if somebody comes in full of the devil. The greatest place they can be is the house of God. They'll hear some truth. Right. Mm. But notice this man who's full of the devil. He cries with a loud voice saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? Can I say there's more than just the devil? He's got legions of devil. And his little imps mess with people. And they're all afraid of Jesus. Notice he knew who Jesus was. There's no controversy here. Now can I say you get all kinds of false Bibles out there. They'll tell you Jesus wasn't the Son of God. They'll tell you that Jesus was just a mere man. They'll tell you he was just a religious man and a religious leader. There's no shortage of opinions on who Jesus uh, is or who he was. But notice the devils know who he is. Mm, the devil says uh, that he's the Holy One of God. Can I say he is? Uh, He's Alpha Omega, the beginning and the end. Uh, he's the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the Lamb of God. Uh, how can I say he's Lord of Lords and King of Kings? Uh, and, and the devil himself and all the imps of hell know who he is. Uh, and we ourselves ought to fear and reverence who he is. We not only see adversity, notice that acknowledgement. Thou art the Holy One of God. Do you know who Jesus is today? Say, I know who he is, but do you know him? The devil knew who he was, but he didn't know him. It's not enough to know who he was or who he is. Say, well, he's the man that died on the cross. Yep. He's the man that rose from the dead. Yep. You can know all that and go and die, in the, and, die and go to hell. But do you know him? Have you ever accepted him as your personal Lord and Savior? Notice the admonishing in verse 35. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and heard him not. Notice a couple things here. The devil didn't put up a fight when Jesus rebuked him. Jesus has all power. Jesus told him to hold thy peace. In other words, Jesus said, uh, uh, Keep your mouth shut. I haven't revealed yet who I am. Jesus even told his disciples, says, my time is not ready, but your time is always ready. Right. There was times Jesus would do a work in somebody's life and he'd charge them not to tell anybody. Yep. He didn't want them to come out for a circus. He wanted them to come out by faith. Yes. So Jesus says, hold your peace. Notice even that demon's glorifying God. He said, hold your peace. Amen. And then Jesus said, come out of him. He said, what happened? He came out. Uh, can I say anything Jesus tells the devil and his crowd to do, they have to do it. See, people got the mindset that Jesus is this power and he's on one side of a chessboard and the devil has power and he's on the other side and we're just the pawns in the middle and there's a constant struggle and in the end, Jesus going to barely win out. No, 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 no. I can take you starting in Genesis chapter 3 and take you through the entire Bible and every time the devil confronts Jesus, Jesus whips him, whips him. He leaves with his tail tucked. I mean, uh, uh, the devil's no match for Jesus uh, and there's coming a day when Jesus is going to command him to be thrown in the lake of fire and there he'll be thrown forever and ever and ever. Jesus has all power. Uh, the devil's powerless before his throne uh, and if Jesus can uh, uh, help this man with his demon, uh, Jesus can help him anybody with what they're facing uh, and then notice the amazement look in verse 36 and they were all amazed and they spake among themselves saying what a word is this for with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits and they come out and the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about uh, notice why Jesus said, hold thy peace. They didn't come out and say, well, the devil said he's the, he's the Holy One of God. Notice what they went around telling. They went around telling this man speaks with authority and power and commands the unclean spirits to come out, and they do. They start praising and testifying as to what Jesus does for others. Is that not what he commanded us to do? Just go tell people what he did for us. 
Just go tell him what garbage dump he found you in. And he reached down into your low pit and pulled you out and put you on a rock. Uh, uh, saved you. Uh, put praise unto God in your lips. Uh, 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 just tell him where you was, uh, where he found you, what he did for you. Isn't that what Jesus wants you to do? Uh, hey, listen. Uh, uh, Jesus don't want me to give your testimony. He wants to give my testimony. He wants me to tell you what he did for me. Uh, hey, uh, I can tell real good about that because I know about it. I was there. Uh, hey, you just want you to tell what he did for you. Uh, he might have saved you as a child uh, might have saved you off of a bar stool uh, might have saved you out of a drug house uh, might have saved you uh, uh, on the job uh, uh, might have saved you just being a good moral person uh, it doesn't matter uh, uh, what you were what it matters is what you did with Jesus uh, what he delivered you from uh, and who he is in your life uh, they were amazed at what Jesus done can I say these, these folks have been going to that synagogue for years. Heard old dead priests get up and give a dead doctrine. But Jesus comes in and he gives life. And they didn't get over it. And so we see the difference. Now I want you to look in verse 36. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves saying, What a word is this. And I want to preach with God's help on that very thought. What a word is this. You know what we preach today? The very same thing Jesus preached. Mm. You know what we preach today? The very thing he gave the apostles to preach. Uh, can I say, uh, I'm thankful we got a nice building. I'm thankful the furnaces are working today, especially today. Huh? I'm thankful we have comfortable pews to sit in. I'm thankful it's clean. I'm thankful everything is nice. Uh, I, I, I'm thankful you all are nice. Uh, I, I'm glad, I mean, folks come in, they, they fellowship, they shake hands. Uh, uh, we don't have folks come and you sit on this side and you sit on that side. Don't look at me. I don't look at you because I don't like you. We don't have that crowd around here. Uh, I'm glad everything's inviting. Everything's warm. I'm glad we got talented people to play instruments. Uh, I'm glad we got folks that can sing. Uh, I mean, all that is wonderful. Uh, I, I'm glad for that uh, uh, but can I say without the word of God all of that would be in vain uh, uh, can I say uh, uh, what separates us uh, uh, from everybody else in the world uh, is what thus saith the Lord uh, hey uh, it's not about us uh, it's not about our abilities uh, it's not about our friendliness uh, it's not about all this nice stuff we got around here uh, what it's about is this uh, this is what separates uh, us from the world uh, Jesus said he didn't come into the world to bring a peace uh, but a sword uh, uh, this word divides uh, uh, this word conquers uh, uh, this word makes a difference uh, even that crowd uh, after listening to that Jewish priest all them years uh, and that rabbi teach uh, they said what he had uh, is mundane and normal uh, but when the master showed up uh, what a word is this uh, it's a powerful word uh, it's a life changing word uh, hey what a word is this uh, hey Hey, uh, I have nothing to offer uh, save the Word of God uh, and the Word of God to get the job done. Uh, hey, it's forever settled in heaven. Uh, it still works today. Uh, what a word is this. Uh, can I say this? Uh, uh, the Word of God uh, brings conviction of sin. Uh, uh, it brings conviction of sin. The Bible says, uh, At the entrance of thy word, uh, give it light unto all, and understanding unto all that are in the house. Uh, uh, can I say so then faith cometh by hearing, uh, hearing by the word of God. Uh, it's through the word of God we find there's none righteous, no, not one. Uh, it's through the word of God that we find all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, it is through the word of God uh, we realize uh, we were conceived in iniquity uh, and in sin did our mother bring us forth. Uh, uh, we were sinners by nature, uh, sinners by practice, uh, sinners by choice. Uh, and if it wouldn't been for the word of God, uh, we'd be out sinning this morning. Uh, but I want to tell you, uh, I came in conflict with the word of God uh, and the word of God confronted me. Uh, and the word of God said, uh, you can't go to heaven living like you're living. Uh, and the word of God convicted me, uh, showed me I was lost, uh, showed me I was a sinner. Uh, hey, but the word of God also showed me uh, there was hope, uh, there was help. Uh, 
and there was healing for sin uh, and it's in Jesus uh, hey what a word is this uh, it brings conviction of sin uh, can I say this the word of God converts the soul the Bible says we are begotten by an incorruptible seed uh, what's it talking about the word of God hey this book isn't just a book written by man this book was pinned down by holy men of God who were moved by the Holy Ghost uh, can I say it is a God breathed book it is a book that is without error it is infallible it has stood the test of time and this book when it's preached and convicts you of sin will also tell you for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord this word of God says whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved this word of God says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life how can I say it converts the soul hey it's not turning over a new leaf it's not being baptized it's not joining a church it's putting your faith and your trust in the finished works of Calvary Paul said I've delivered unto you what I also have received myself that Jesus died according to the scriptures that he was buried that he rose again according to the scriptures hey when you put your faith and trust in what Jesus did on Calvary for you my dear friend, it'll convert you. Uh, hey, uh, third Saturday night of March 1974, uh, I walked into the building a sinner, uh, but I walked out a saint of God because uh, I heard the word of God preached uh, and I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, repented of my sins, and he saved me, uh, converted me from a sinner to a saint. Uh, why? Because what a word is this. Uh, all across this country, there are self-help programs. You go to Barnes & Noble, there's a section of self-help books that uh, make you skinny, make you rich, make you pretty. I mean, they do everything or they promise to. But you look in the mirror, it's still you. You're not skinny, you're not pretty, and you're, and you're broke. Uh, you know, they write all them books how to be a millionaire. You know what they're doing? They're saying, buy my book and I'll be a millionaire. Yeah. That's what they're really doing. All kinds of self-help. You know, our country is faced with an epidemic of drug abuse. And there are programs out there that help people deal with their past and deal with their pain and help people deal with their addiction. But the problem is... They don't change your soul. And when you get away from your sponsor, you're so subject to all those things that got you in that place in the first place. But I want to tell you something. If you ever meet the one that made you, he'll convert you and he'll change you. The Bible said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, not a new creation, new creature former things have passed away behold all things become new uh, uh, what I used to be I'm not anymore uh, because of the blood of Jesus Christ uh, that cleansed me from every sin uh, hey the appetite I used to have I don't have anymore uh, things I used to enjoy I don't enjoy anymore why uh, Jesus changed me uh, hey nobody forced me to change uh, he changed me uh, cause when he moves in the devil's gotta move out uh, and business picks up in your life uh, and and he'll change your desires and your want to. Uh, worst thing that ever happened to somebody is trust Jesus and never get in the Bible. And never change their appetite. But I want to tell you the Bible, this word brings conviction of sin and it converts the soul. Can I say something about this word? What a word is this? It comforts a troubled mind. Boy, there's been times I've been faced with fear and with doubt struggle to get my head wrapped around things didn't know how things were going to turn out but I found myself in this word and God began to just speak to me and oh all that trouble that was floating around in my mind just dissipated and all of a sudden peace came on 
hey, the, the circumstances were still the same, but you know what? He gave me help that it didn't matter anymore because I had him. He's the one that's in control of it all anyway. A lot of times you'll be troubled. Might be troubled over a loved one. Might be troubled over a child. Might be troubled over your job. Might be troubled over things out of your control. But I'm here to tell you, if you can just get to this word, you'll find comfort for your troubled mind. You'll find he's a present help in time of need. You, you need, just need to cry like the psalmist. I'll look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Uh, you'll find help in this word. Uh, can I say what a word is this? It conforms one into the image of Christ. Can I say the word of God when it converts you and saves you, can I say it changes you from the inside out? But the outside still got a lot of rough edges. You know what a change those rough edges? The Word of God. Word of God starts chipping away at them. Starts working on them, smoothing them out. And all of a sudden you start looking different. You start walking different. You start talking different. And all of a sudden folks start identifying you with Christ. Because the Word of God will conform you into His image. There's a fellow on that green banner back there named Frank Stinson. He's about third name down. Old Brother Frank was a Jew. I bring him up from time to time. Old Frank used to pray if anybody in the church had a need. Maybe they just needed a friend. And God lay somebody in his heart, he'd take them out by buy a hamburger. Or if he found out they had a need, couldn't afford their medication, he'd slip them a little money, get them their medication. I mean, he's just that kind of fella. But when Frank came to this church, he wasn't that fella. Matter of fact, when Frank came to this church, he looked like an, uh, an Elvis impersonator. I mean, he had a big comb over that was dyed. Open collar, had a big old gold medallion. I'd like to have that today. It'd be worth some money. Uh, big old chain, leisure suit. And he came because Brother Stewart invited him. They used to work together. Brother Stewart wanted him to the Lord. I didn't know all Frank's story. I know Frank came, we was in revival meeting. He came forward, he grabbed Brother Stewart with one arm, grabbed me with another, and got us to the altar, and he said, boys, you got to pray for me, I need to get right with God. And he did that day. And then he kept coming to church. I didn't find this out till later, Brother Clint. I know you love Brother Frank. He introduced you to the Whopper, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> He'd never had a Whopper till Frank come around. Huh? But I never knew this. But Brother Frank said he was in that old building. He'd leave every, every Sunday. He'd leave say, I can't go back. He'd come in that preach and just hit him. He'd say, I can't go back. I can't go back. I can't go back. So that word of God cuts, and it was cutting all them rough edges off. He didn't like it. His flesh didn't like it. I'll never forget he came on one Sunday. He'd come. He had that comb over all cut off, had a necktie on, was in a suit. Nobody knew. The people were going up, and I was inviting him, welcoming him as, as a visitor. I am saying, what are you doing? That's Frank. Well, I never. What he told me, he said he'd leave, and that word of God was cutting on him. He said, I couldn't go back. And he said, I'd go home, start reading my Bible, and God said, you need to go back. You need to go back. And he said, and finally, I, I quit fighting God, and I just let him work on me and he said and he started cutting all that that stuff off of me that I didn't need and see when Frank allowed God to do that Frank became a great great tool that Jesus used to help other people and can I say you'd be hard pressed to find anybody that lived a Christian life more than Frank Stinson after he let the word of God conform him to the image of Christ can I say what a word is this it confounds the wise. Paul said, My speech was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, yet in the demonstration of the Spirit with power. He went on to say that God chooses the base things to confound the wise. Now listen. If we advertised we had some great orator here today that was going to uh, uh, come and expound on the meaning of life and use all of his education and all his years of experience to explain the hidden mysteries for all mankind. This place would be packed out. We charge a mission 15 bucks a head. They'd pack the place out. But see, God didn't choose man's intellect to impress man. 
God chose you to use dumb hillbillies, stand up, preach the word of God, and spirit and power to change people's lives. Can I say? God chose through the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe. And say, Brother Doug, why you get so excited? Why are you spitting slobber? And not? Oh, that's the way God wired me. But, but listen, you can get excited when your team plays and scores, and, and gets, you can get excited over birthday candles, and you can get excited over Christmas gifts, and you can get excited. Oh, I just get excited about Jesus. I can't help it change my life. Uh, can I say? Sometimes he gets so big on the inside of me, it's just got to blow. And you ought to be thankful. 30 years ago, I was jumping on pews and said, I'm too old for that stuff now. The desire's there, but I just look now to that pew so high. <laughs> and I realized how sore I'd be tomorrow. But can I say, God chooses to confound the wise with His Bible. Yes. Do you know how many highly educated men have tried to disprove it, and all they do is prove it? Yep. Mm. You know how many uh, so-called atheists have stood up against a, a dumb old hillbilly had the Bible and the atheist walk away scratching his head? You know why? Because you can't, you can't improve upon God's Word. You can deny it all you want to, but a hundred years from now you wish you would have believed it. Can I say the Word of God calms all fears? And it's in the Word of God we find there's a peace that passes all understanding. Mm. I've seen some folks that were really facing something terrible. You just start reading them the Word of God, and that fear dissipates and a smile comes on their face because the Word of God has that effect on people. Can I say this? The Word of God always conquers the devil. When Jesus had fasted for 40 days, the devil came to tempt him in the wilderness. The devil tempted him with the very three things that he tempts us with. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. In each case, Jesus looked at him and said, It is written. And he used the word of God. And he rebuked the devil, and the devil left him. Can I say, the word of God always conquers the devil. The next time the devil wants to get in a car with you, just start quoting the Word of God. He'll get out. Next time he wants to start putting, putting thoughts in your mind, just start quoting the Word of God. He'll get out. Because hmm? uh, the Word of God conquers him every time. Can I say? Whatever excuse man has, the Word of God has the answer for it. It conquers the devil. The devil's no match for the Word of God. Why do you think he's tried so hard to destroy it? I say this all the time. How come every time they come out with a new and improved version of the Bible that takes away the blood of Jesus Christ, takes away de Jesus' deity, takes away from the Word of God? By the way, the last chapter says not to add to or take away, or God will take your name out of the book of life. But every time they come out with a new version, they always say it's better than the King James Bible. Why don't they say it's better than the last version came out six months ago? Because they're still making money on that. If you look in the front of your King James Bible, you'll find there's no copyright. I don't need anybody's permission to keep producing the Word of God. But you go get one of them new versions, you need their permission because they're making money on it. God wasn't interested in making money. He owns it all. He's interested in delivering people and breaking their bondage. And the devil's always attacked this book. Do you realize the first uh, 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 correction of the Bible, Wilcott and Hort, them wicked guys left out part of the New Testament because they didn't want to see you, God can deliver you. They deliberately did it, and every modern version uses their Greek text and not the original. And my dear friends, what a blessing to have God's Word because Job says man's days are few and full of trouble. You're going to face some hard days. You're going to face some days when you feel like the devil's on your back. But God's given us the greatest tool to overcome it all. Word of God. What a word is this? Can I say this? The word of God changes not. It changes not. It's forever settled in heaven. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and so is his word. It changes not. That might not sound important, but that's important. Do you know how many changes I've seen in my lifetime? 
And I was born to JFK was president. I know I don't look that old. Trust me. Huh? Every president in my lifetime has promised to better America, but things aren't getting better. They're getting worse. We just celebrated Friday night uh, my in-law's 50th wedding anniversary. And Jordan put together a video of 1968 when they got married. Hershey bars were 10 cents. They're not 10 cents anymore. You go to Pilot, you can get two of them for 333. <laughs> Otherwise, they're about eight bucks a piece. Huh? A GTO judge sold for $3,200. Now Barrett Jackson gets 150 for one in the shape that one was in. Huh? Gasoline was 32 cents a gallon, and it went up 30 cents this week. But all the changes that have happened. You know, when I was a teenager, or just about to be a teenager, we still had our money based on the gold standard. Not anymore. That's why they can print all they want. It's not worth the paper they're printing it on. Hmm. It wasn't that long ago. The stock market was just trying to get over 10000 Now it's over 25000 But I tell you what, I don't feel like I, I, I'm, I'm worth more than I did then. Because it's inflated. I'm just trying to help you something. A lot of things change. My waistline changes all the time. Can I say, things of this world are shifting sand. I showed my Sunday school class, unless I click my office bathroom door, it will open automatically. But come spring, when the ground set and thaws and settles, it'll naturally close. Because this building's shifting. That's why there's a crack above that camera right there. Brother Ray's cr fixed cracks after cracks after cracks in this place, but every time winter comes, something shifts. See, you don't notice it because it's kind of gradual. There's been a shift in the mentality of America. Used to, there was patriotism. Now, if you're a patriot, you're mean-spirited. Used to, America was run by the Constitution. Now the Constitution's out of date and it's mean. Used to, if your yeas were yeas and your nays were nays, you were considered upstanding. Now you're considered a bigot. See, the climate of American, America has changed. Politicians will sell you out for a dollar. And in four years tell you how, how important they are in your life. I'm just trying to tell you, everything has changed. There are things going on in the public streets and on TV in America today that when I was young, it didn't go on. There were times when fat guys from North Korea would not have drawn a line in the sand with America. But see, things change. But you know what you can always count on? The Word of God. It never changes. Same word that was preached 40-something years ago when I got saved still being preached today. Uh, it doesn't change. Uh, do you notice the climate of religion? Now, in order to win the new generation of millennials, we need to have rock bands and we need to, you know, put on theatrical programs and, and we need to appeal to people's intellects and give them coffee and donuts and all kinds of stuff because that's what's going to win the next generation. Well, that lasts with those people about six months. And then they're looking for another crowd. You know what never changed? God's Word. Amen. You know what's good for every millennial and every generation God's word it never changes it's always the same never changes you say well you're one of them archaic preaching churches well call me whatever you want to we're just sticking with the Bible if that don't work we're in trouble but I got news to you till Jesus comes that's the only way that will work he said I am the way the truth and the life no man comes unto the father but by me the Bible way is the only way, friend. What a word is this. I don't know what you need in your life, but I know the answer is found in the Word of God. It, it, it delivered this man, and it amazed those in attendance. Hmm? 
Over at the jail earlier today, five ladies got delivered. And that amazes me that God still saves old sinners. Huh? Never get tired of hearing folks get saved. Last Sunday, 17 got saved. I hadn't got over that. And here, five more saved today. What a blessing. Huh? I, I bless the Lord. Amen. God loves sinners. And He loves you. And whatever you've got in your life that, that, that needs help, Jesus can help you today. What a word is this. You may be here today. You might not be saved. Jesus loves you. He died for you. And He'll save you if you put your faith in His word and what He said. My dear friends, you might be here, you might be saved, but you might be struggling. i got news for you. There's a word for you. God will help you, and he'll strengthen you. you. might be here today, and you're cold. Jeremiah said he was ready to quit, but there was a fire shut up in his bones. There's a word that can help you warm your heart again. I don't know what the need is, but I know the Bible has the answer. And if you'll let the Bible speak to your heart, it'll help you, it'll change you, and others We'll see what great things God has done. We're going to have an invitation. We invite you to come get some help. Whatever your need is, Jesus will help you. If you're here today and you're not saved, if you'll come, we'll take the Bible and show you what God said about being saved. You can be saved today. If you're here today and you're saved, oh, are others seeing Jesus in your life? Oh, my dear friends, what a word is this. Can I say, it's worth telling others. How great Jesus is. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. While he comes, we're going to pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you, Lord, that it stood the test of time. Never changes. Still as powerful and up to date as it's always been. And God, I pray you'd help somebody today. <clears throat> Lord, if there's somebody here unsaved, I pray today would be the day of their salvation. God, if there's somebody here saved, but Lord, uh, things just aren't like they used to be, I pray they'd come get that thing settled. Maybe somebody's here is weak, I pray you'd strengthen them. Maybe somebody's low, I pray you'd lift them. And God, I pray the sweet Holy Ghost would do a work using the Word of God in this place today. Help us, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.